Welcome back, everybody, to another installment of Lens Days. Lens Days is a series that I'm doing where we talk about optics, we talk about lenses, and the whole idea is that the better that you understand the tools that you have, the better results in your own image making that you're going to get. And so we've talked a lot about sharpness, we've talked a little bit about bokeh, and in the last video I started to talk a little bit about field curvature, and that's what I want to dig into a little deeper in this video. On a basic level, most of us understand concepts like depth of field and focus, and then how do we really visualize that, and how do we understand that lens characteristics might deviate from what we expect a lens to actually do. Photography is a two-dimensional medium that has a three-dimensional implication. In other words, we have physical width and height of an image, whether that's printed or whether that's on a screen, but we don't actually physically have depth that is created visually. And so how do we create that? Well, there's different compositional techniques that are obviously going to create that. This includes things like lighting and perspective. But one thing that's very unique to photography that we don't have necessarily in other mediums is depth the field. We have blurriness in our image, and this is the way that lenses render. There is no way to get 100% everything in the picture in focus with just a standard camera lens unless you start making modifications. It's actually one of the things I really love about photography. Because of the physical characteristics of how a lens works, we are almost always forced to make decisions about how we're going to capture an image, where the focus point's going to be, and how that is impacted in the overall composition. So on a very basic level, we learn at the very beginning when we pick up a camera, how aperture affects what we call depth of field. Depth of field is the part of the focal plane in your composition where things are in focus. Now, the wider an aperture you use, the less will be in focus. The smaller aperture that you use, more will become into focus. Most people understand that as a concept. What most people don't understand is that in some lenses, this is not actually a flat field. It can have some curvature to it. So how could we visualize if a lens does indeed have field curvature? And if so, what does that look like? I have a very unorthodox technique that I want to share with you guys, but first I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, which are the awesome folks over at Wine Country Camera. Wine Country Camera produces the best filter holder system available. In fact, it is the only filter holder system with a workflow for combining a circular polarizer, ND filters, and graduated filters, and making adjustments without ever disturbing critical focus. Their Blackstone filters use vapor deposition coating techniques and fire polished shot ultra white glass that are designed for high resolution resolution detail without the color shift that you find in many neutral density filters. This system uses step-up rings to attach to any lens, and for wider angle lenses with no filter threading, they have a 150 millimeter system with custom designed lens attachments. This is the system for serious landscape artists. Right now, you can use the link in the description to save 20% off of anything in the entire store by using offer code AOP on checkout. Once again, that offer code is AOP, and I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Wine Country camera for sponsoring another episode of the art of photography. So I have a technique that I want to show you. We're actually going to use a Photoshop filter to do this, but this is going to give us an idea of where depth of field is and how we can kind of visualize this. So if I go over to Lightroom here, this is an image of my cat, Judy. Some of you guys probably know her from previous shows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this image up in Photoshop. So if I right click, I'm going to say edit in and we're going to bring it into Photoshop. And this technique that I'm going to show you, I actually saw on Lens Rentals blog. And if you guys are interested in learning more, I will put a link in the show description on that. This is not a scientific test, but it allows you to at least visualize in your own images and do testing with your own lens that does not require high-end equipment or fancy software to do. But anyway, this was shot with a 24 millimeter lens at f2.8, and you can see the cat's face is in focus. The rest of the picture is not. So what we're going to do is apply a filter. So we are going to go under the filter menu at the top. I'm going to go down to stylize, and in the stylize category, we are going to select the find edges filter. This is a filter that has no control, it just does one thing and it goes across the image and it looks for edges with significant transition to them and it makes those dark, smoother transitions between colors and shapes and contrasts tend to go more towards white. But what it does is it shows you on a scale here of darker being sharper and obviously whiter being the softer parts of the image, what is in focus. Now with an image like this, you can tell what's in focus without having to do this, but I want to show you what it's doing. So we talked about in the last video about MTF charts and how contrast is measured with line pairs and that's kind of how sharpness is defined in any image when you have detail and you have transitions that are significant so edge to edge if there's definition there you have sharpness if it's not sharp you won't have nearly as much definition it tends to bleed into shapes and colors tend to bleed into one another so I use this on an image just to show you that yes indeed the very front part of my cat is in focus the rest of the image is not now if we take the same concept and apply it to an image like this one we can start to visualize where 
the depth of field will actually be in our composition. Now, in this image, we have a street, which is made of concrete, and so it has texture. Having something with texture is very important. You could also use a grassy field, mulch, anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say edit in Adobe Photoshop. Let's open this up. And once again, we are going to apply the same filter stylize find edges. And you can see that now because the street is textured and it's more or less in a 3D space here or 3D representation, we can see where that depth of field is. And you can also see that, yes, indeed, there is field curvature, especially on the sides. It tends to curve back. It kind of comes up and then goes back towards the center and then back away again. So this is not the end of the world and it does not mean that this is a bad lens. As I mentioned in the last video, it just means that you have field curvature and this is actually fairly common to have on something like a 24 to 70 millimeter lens is what this was shot with. And it means that you need to be aware of it. If you're trying to use a very shallow depth of field and you're shooting a group of people, for instance, you're really trying to blur out that background, it could mean that one of the faces starts to drift in and out of focus and you could have some issues there. Also, if you shoot architecture, like the front of a building or something, and you need that aperture wide open, this could be a challenge. Being aware of it tells you that you probably need to stop the lens down and you need to start being aware of what settings might get the best image. Let's apply this to another image. This image was done with a completely different lens. This was done with a 35 millimeter f1.8. And let's go ahead and open this up. Let's go ahead and shortcut the filter application there. And you can see that this lens does not have a lot of curvature. This is actually pretty much straight. It's never going to be completely straight, but it is very much more so than something that like this that exhibits a large amount of field curvature. So this would be a lens that you could shoot a group of people with wide open as long as they're in a straight line. You could probably do architecture with this. You could do the front of a building if you want to do the famous brick wall test that everybody loves to review lenses with. This is one that will probably yield better results. But you can see that it's still a little bit curved and I can understand how my specific lens, not a theoretical measurement or something from the factory actually works. And so this is a really good indicator of that. Another thing that's important to note is our point of focus is fairly close to the camera in this image, actually in both images. The further you move back away from the camera, the further you push that focus point back, your depth of field will increase because it's just done at scale. That's how it works. So this is an f1.8 lens. This is an f2.8 lens. And so obviously you're going to increase your chances of things being in focus by stopping down. But I think it's also worth noting that this type of wave pattern here that we're seeing with field curvature will actually intensify when I move it back in terms of like this point being in focus and the same point just like right here being out of focus. So this can be a problem at different uh, focal distances. And this is another thing that you can test. But uh, anyway, that is worth noting. So this does bring me to the second part that I want to talk about. How do you know what's in focus and how wide this depth of field is at any given setting? This can actually be a challenge unless you have a camera or a lens that supports some kind of depth of field scale. Most of them don't. Most lenses look like this one. Modern lens design and the aesthetic involved is just kind of a black tube with minimal markings on it. But one of my favorite lenses to use as an example, I've used it in all three videos so far, the Zeiss Loxia 35mm f2. The Zeiss Loxias all have this little depth of field scale on the side of the lens. So this is how you read this. On the focus collar, when I turn this, you're going to see that it has markings in numbers and it tells you over on the right hand side that the top row of numbers is feet, the bottom row is meters. This is showing you the distance of your focal point from your lens. And so, for instance, if I select this clear over at infinity, you're going to see that under that we have kind of this mirrored scale and there's a point in the middle and then it says 4, 8, 16, 22. Basically, because it's mirrored, it's showing you that everything on either side of that middle line will be in focus according to, to your f-stop. So, for instance, if I brought this over to, let's say, 2 feet and I change this from 2 to, let's change the aperture down to 4, I'm going to see that I can see with the corresponding 4s that I didn't get much depth of field increase off that really at all. At f4, we're not even at 2.5 feet over on the outer side there. But if I start stopping it down to say f8 or f11, maybe f16, I can see that now I have everything from 2 feet to 2.5 feet. Now, I said this scales, so if we pull this out, and I'm going to go more towards infinity. In fact, since we're at f16, if I put infinity on the 16 that's on the right there, you're going to see that we have everything, if you look on the left, between almost 5 feet, 4.5 feet to infinity. That's a much bigger depth of field than it was when we were focused in at 2 feet. And so you can use this to actually, this is very handy if you're shooting landscapes and you can kind of guesstimate at least where your focus point needs to be to get everything in focus. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is no such thing as a completely infinite focus of depth of field in a camera. The only way you can do that is to use a tilt shift lens and 
actually tilt the lens forward to throw the focal plane sideways so you can actually start to get more in there. If you use Fujifilm cameras, there is actually a way to see the depth of field scale in camera. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you are in manual focus mode. The second thing you want to do is turn on the camera, go into the menu, and there are two options for this. If I go into autofocus, manual focus, the second section down, and I'm going to scroll down to page two, and I'm going to, near the bottom here, you're gonna see depth of field scale. By default, this is set up at pixel. I'm going to set this to film format basis. Film format is going to be a lot more loose than pixel, and I think also a lot more practical. Pixel basis is going to be very strict in what it defines as actually in focus versus starting to fall out of the focus plane. And so I think in terms of what you would be using manual focus for, either studio work or maybe let's say landscape or architecture work, when you're in manual focus, I think this is going to give you a better estimation of what you're actually going for with the lens. Like I said, it's a lot more loose. So having said that, let's go into the viewfinder here. And you can see because I'm in manual focus that I have a focus scale at the bottom of the screen here. And so I'm going to set my focus point to let's say 10 feet. Now this lens is wide open at f1.4. When I start to stop down the aperture, look closely what happens. You're going to see these two blue lines that go on either side of our focus point. This is telling me what is in focus. So when I go down to f16, I can see that this is all going to be in focus, anything pretty much in that blue line. So if I want everything from 10 feet to infinity, f16 will certainly do it. Now notice that when I move my focus down, that line is going to shrink and get thrown around a little bit. So when I'm down at two feet or three feet, I have a much smaller field of focus. So this is how we can kind of visualize how that depth of field or the field of focus is actually behaving. How wide is it versus how shallow is it? So me being a nerd, I wish that all camera manufacturers had this smooth an implementation of a focus scale, especially when you're in manual focus mode. It really helps to see things. Fujifilm did a tremendously good job with that. And I wish that all lenses had technical markings on them. I know that's not very popular in today's world. Everything is a very minimal uh, dark aesthetic with very little markings, but the Zeiss did a great job with the Loxias putting the technical markings on there. And if you're using them for landscape or in a situation where you do need a better understanding of this and a very specific uh, need to know what is in focus, this can really help. But that's not the way it works. And to be honest, most people don't need that much information all the time. This would be for very specific situations, though I think you do need to learn in your head how depth of field works at a distance and at scale scale and understanding that it's much shallower the closer you are to a lens, it's much wider the further you go away from the lens. When is a good time to be able to stop down to f11 or f16? Is that a good idea? We've talked in previous videos about the fact that you start to introduce diffraction at smaller apertures and so the sharpest setting for your lens might be f5.6 and so can you make that work within the picture? And these are things to start thinking about. I think when you are able to do that in your mind theoretically and then also using a visualization like what we've done with some of these images running them through the find edges filter, this gives you a much better understanding of how a lens behaves, what it does, when it's sharp, when it's not. And this is ultimately going to get you better results out of the equipment that you already have. It doesn't mean you need to go buy a more expensive lens. It's just an understanding of what it is that you have. I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop me a comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, later.